Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of, well, well, it's a new episode of something called Surviving. And this time we're going to talk about front lines. A quick reminder for anyone who doesn't know what front line is, and if you haven't, if you don't know what front line is, where have you had been hiding for the last two years? But anyway, front line is the first part of the expedition game mode. Click this icon here in the middle. It'll give you lots more information about Frontline. Particularly this bit at the bottom here, which shows you all the information that you need to know about Frontline, how it works, how you play it, what the rewards are, etc, etc, etc. As you can see, Expedition 2020 is split into two sides. There's Frontline, which has four stages, and Steel Hunter, which has four stages. And as part of completing Frontline, you get reward tokens, which means you can buy these tanks and ultimately after playing frontline all four stages and steel hunter all four stages you should be able to buy two of these tanks two out of the three so now you've been refreshed on what frontlines is if you didn't know what well, why do i want to talk about frontlines when it's almost over well what i'm actually going to talk about is how i managed to survive this year's frontlines anyone who knows me knows that i, I like i liked frontlines when it first came out two years ago but when Wargaming messed around with the format of it last year and to make it a grindathon to get get the Emil 15 whatever it is tank, um, I just I wasn't impressed. I couldn't do it. I played the first month and then I just I just couldn't play it anymore. And so I just thought it was a massive grind, and I and I think. So Wargaming probably realised that too, because towards the end of the event they introduced the boosters so that people could to encourage people to play it and people just didn't want to play it. And I know a lot of a lot of my friends just didn't play it. They just didn't want to play it, they couldn't play it, it was too grindy, you had to make, commit too much of your time to it. And if you streamed, you didn't really want to stream front lines because it's boring to watch. And winning and losing is kind of irrelevant. You know, it, it's a it, it's camp for camp for damage. Get your ranks, and then you know that's it. So, so, so the thing with you know Frontlands, when it came around this year, I gave it a bit of a chance again to see if I could actually manage to grind my way through it this year. You know, try and get in there. And thankfully for Wargaming, I think they've made it a considerably easier grind than it was last year. So, um, given the overview of, of what you needed to do this year, with Frontlines this year you needed to grind 12 tokens across 4 stages, which is 3 tokens per stage, um, in order to be able to get one of the real world tanks, the, the um, A Phase 1, the Shah Future, or the object 777 777 777 so um could i do it well yeah i did i did manage to do it um and, I, and i'll tell you how i did it so in the first mark the first sorry the first stage in march um i got to level 15 i did it in 34 battle an average of xp of 527 a battle and I got all three tokens. I've got to level 15. So you get a token for every five levels. And Wargaming also did a bit of a mess up on that event. And so they gave us a bonus token, but they didn't award it until the start of phase two. And what happened was phase two because I was being minimalist here and not wanting to do anything at all possible, when it came to phase two in April, sorry, to stage two in April, I only got to level 10, which got me two tokens plus the one bonus token, and I did that in 15 battles, again with an average XP of 580 games. Now, the second April event, which came along, I needed to get to level 15 again, I did that in 29 battles, this time with an average XP of 544 a game, And finally, uh, when May came along, I needed to get to level 15 again, which I did, and I did it in 28 um, 
battles, 573 average XP per battle. And again, got the three tokens. And if you look at the numbers, I'm not going to go through it individually, but these are the ranks that I got with each of the stages as well. So a private, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, major, general. And if you can look, it's like I was consistently getting lieutenant, captain, few majors, few generals, or sergeant. You know, I was consistently in the middle. Um, now, working through all the games that I got, that came up with an average game time of 22 minutes. So, so for March, 34 battles, 22 minutes. You're looking at maybe two or three hours a day for seven days. Not even that, two hours for seven days is fine. April, I'd stopped by the, the third day. I'd, I'd got I'd got my, my uh, 15 battles out of the way and that was it. Second April again, event again. 14 and a half hours worth of of battles. May, 14 hours of battles. Two hours a day. I actually, with the last May one, I think I actually cranked it up. I did about three hours a day, and so I was finished by Friday. But I wasn't concentrating on just doing it all. Playing more front lines than that for me was too much. I don't think it's an enjoyable game mode at all. There's still too many bugs in it. The spotting mechanic seem broken. The ground sky bug is still there. Wargaming, if they fixed these bugs and they made it enjoyable so you could actually... You knew how your spotting mechanics worked in Frontlands as opposed to a normal game. I'm pretty sure you get spotted at full range. As soon as you fire a shot in this game mode. And, I, and to me that's like... I mean there, look, spotted. Now... Anyone tell me what I spotted? Someone's going to say, oh, there was an aeroplane flying overhead. No, there wasn't an aeroplane flying overhead. It was that like even 90 that spotted me. But, again, it just seems like the spotting mechanics in this game mode are broken. Um, like I say, there's the ground sky bug. And then there's the... It, people just don't seem to understand how to play the game mode to get the best out of it. You have teams rushing to try and capture all the bases. Winning means nothing. Losing means nothing. It's a pure XP grind. It's it's just not an enjoyable game mode. In my opinion. Tell me what you think. Do you like it? A lot of the people I think just like wanted to get it out of the way. Is Steel Hunter going to be any better? I don't know. I hope it will. I enjoyed Steel Hunter last year. I enjoyed it when they had it on the test server uh, two years ago and it's in its infancy. Am I going to be able to play it? Are Wargaming going to do something to it like they did to Frontlands when Frontlands first came out? And, you know, to make it not enjoyable. Who knows? Again, it's going to be a completely different game mode. Completely different game mode. But, is it going to be worth playing? I just don't know. I, I really hope it is. On a personal note, I am now absolutely ecstatic to see the back of Frontlands for another year. I've got it out of the way. I've survived it. I've done it. And that's what you guys need to do to, to survive Frontlines. That is what you need to do. Not too hard. And it's, you know... Take it in bite-sized chunks. And this year, I think you can take it in bite-sized chunks. Last year, you couldn't. It was a pure, pure grind-a-thon. Wargaming, to their credit, have made it a lot easier this year. A lot easier to grind. And I think a lot more people will have done it. Enticement, maybe, of three different tanks over two game modes over the full year. Absolutely fantastic. Again, well done, Wargaming. Everyone says to me, you're critical of Wargame and you never say anything positive about them. This time, I am. They've, they've, they've hit the difficulty right on the sweet spot. You do not to be, need to be a sad no-lifer to be able to, to get these tanks in this game mode. You really don't. So, fantastic. Well done, Wargaming. And if you want bonds, you can carry on after you've got the tank and you can get bonds. I haven't touched it now. I haven't played a game of Frontline since Friday when I got my last general. Um, don't think it was this game I think this was Thursday night but I've had a you know 
I've had enough of it. I've had enough of it. I don't want to see it anymore. This video is going to be my last thing about front lines for this year. And hopefully the advice that I give you in this video will help you, if Wargaming don't t tinker with it too much, survive front lines next year as well. If we see front lines next year, you never know. They might come up with something else. This is Wargaming. They do these things, don't they? They come up with stuff out of, out of the blue. Do we maybe need a, a third map? A third front lines map? I think we probably do. I think two maps is getting a bit boring. So come on, Wargaming, give us a bit of investment in the game. Show us what you can do. Show us that you're committed to the game as much as we are. We want to play it. But, you know, a couple more maps, one more map next year. Is that too much to ask for? Don't think it is. So, final bit of advice. What tanks do I use? Well... As you've seen in this one, I tend to use, and a lot of people do, It's this game's about burst damage in some cases. And so I tend to use autoloaders. I use my Progetto, I use my Pantera. Hmm. I also use the Barask, that's quite a good tank. Go to T27, great tank to use in this game mode. Although, it tends to need to fire gold. If you're looking to grind credits, maybe not that one. Hmm. Scouting purposes. EBRs, Lynx 6x6s, those fast scouts that no one can use. And normal scouts are good too. M41, Bulldog. M41 Grand Finals. They're all great, great tanks to use in this game mode. If you want to use heavy tanks, use mobile heavy tanks, or tanks with some decent amount of armour. Um, a tank with armour I use is the Somua. I also use the E75TS. I also use the Renegade. And have you noticed one common factor here? The majority of those tanks I've said are premium tanks. Why is that? Because they make money. And this game mode is awesome for making money. Lance and C, you saw it there. That's quite a good one. Centurion um, 5 1. That's another good one. The Pantera here is probably the one non tech, or the tech tree tank that I use in the game. Because of its burst damage. Only one left. Save the last one. You know, that is why I use it. But yeah, premium tanks. Premium tanks. Premium tanks. Put your crews in that you need to be trained. Put your boosters on. Run your credit boosters. Run your um, experience boosters. Run your crew boosters. Make the most out of front lines. You're committing to a certain amount. Of, you're committing a lot of time to making this game, to playing this game mode. Make sure you make, make sure you get the best out of it. Because this game mode, like I say, I, it, 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 I play it too much. I feel it just drains your soul. Don't play it. Don't play it too much. It's, it's, it was not difficult to do it. And I'm hoping the same is going to be true of Steel Hunter. And depending on what it's like, I'll be doing a surviving Steel Hunter after the first stage. I was planning to do a surviving the, the, the Road to Berlin video, but, you know, the event went. There we go. A general. Not, it wasn't a great game, this, to be honest. I died a lot at the start, but I chose... Enemy is I chose an appropriate set of tanks in an appropriate zone, in an appropriate position where I could get a lot of damage defending the base. And you look at how much damage I do here, from this point, defending the base. And now, for all intents and purposes, this game mode is finished. I, I want this to finish now, but... Unfortunately, because it... Because it there's no reason that winning or losing makes no difference. This game mode is a bit crap. But I've got to carry on. I've got to carry on until we either run out of time, which is another three minutes, or the enemy destroy one more base. But the enemy are pushing into these sectors now. These are the ones we've got to defend and they're in them like... So I'm, I'm, I'm going in now into a bit heavy tanks that I can use from the back. I've, I've used up my... my uh, my, my best auto loaders. I could have probably switched to the Somnuary actually would have been okay, but I might not have been reloaded in time to get to this point. 
you know, get to a point where I'm, I'm doing well enough. But I'm also, if you notice, I've got I've got plenty of tanks left. Um, I've bent, I have bent through my tanks, but I've bent through them. Don't bend through your tanks too fast, so that so that you spend all your time looking at that waiting screen. You know, take your opportunity to get your repairs done. Use the repair points. Don't you know? Overcommit yourself. Don't over push yourself. Don't think, well, I'm the only. There's no one over here. I'm going to have to go over there. Don't, because you know, if you do that, there's going to be three or four enemy there, and they're just going to overmatch you and take you out of the game, and that's it. Before you know it, you'll have lost all your tanks and game over. You, you sat there watching the screen doing nothing. Don't do it. Objective one under attack. And my, probably my last piece of advice, I don't know if you're doing this, it's probably the last, last, last piece of advice. If you don't enjoy playing it, play it with friends. Platoon. I haven't, I deliberately didn't do that this year. I think I made two, I platooned a bit with Ferris uh, in the last stage. Um, one night when we were both bored. And I just wanted to push a few rounds and you wanted to, to play a few games as well. Platoon with your friends, it, it's a lot more fun if you're doing it with two or three people who are going to use the same sort of tanks and go to the same sort of places, and you can wolf pack. You can wolf pack teams and you can win. Because then, if you do that, you'll have more fun. I guarantee that you'll have more fun. Will I be playing Frontlines next year? Will I be playing Frontlines next year? Yeah, of course I will. As long as they keep it at this kind of level, I'll be there. If it... If, it, if they tinker with it, if they make it a bit too much... Too, oh wow, what, that, that shot went awesomely, didn't it? RNG said no. Objective one under attack. Enemy are desperately trying to push there to win this um, zone. The countdown 20 seconds. These guys are desperate, desperate to get this this thing knocked out. We're desperate to defend, but this is how a good game should finish. This is great. We're desperately defending, they're desperately attacking. If only winning and losing meant something. It doesn't. All it means is, all it's doing is controlling when the game finishes. And there we have it, a victory where I was general. Lions 2020 is finished. And pretty much so is this video. So what do you think of Frontlines 2020? Was it worth it? Was it a bit of a grind? A bit too easy compared to last year? Has Wargaming got the balance right? Do we need more lamp maps? Do you think spotting's broken? Do you wish they'd fix the bugs? Do you wish they'd make more different varied game modes like this? Please tell me in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content similar to this, then hit the subscribe button. Uh, and also check out all the links here. We've got Facebook, Twitch and Twitter. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and peace. I rode a tank, held a general's rank When the front line drained and the teams just sang Whoa! Pleased to meet ya Don't you guess my name? Oh yeah! Oh, what's puzzling you is the nature of this game Ha ha!